Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about poetry. Now more recently, I've started to publish some of my poems in kind of little short videos on this channel. I don't actually know how to describe the videos. They're kind of just visual aids to poetry or something. I, I don't even know. They're kind of like little short poetry videos, but they're hard to actually explain just the poetry with added visuals, I suppose. I suppose that's the best way to explain them. Um, now, I've not really read too much poetry in terms of like looking back through history and looking at loads of different poets. I've read a few poems, a handful of poems from Walt Whitman, a handful of poems from Oscar Wilde. I've read a fair few from um, Rainer Maria Ralk, and I always get, I can't pronounce his name. Um, I've read a lot from Dr. Zeus, obviously, because some of my rhyming poetry is heavily inspired from Dr. Zeus. Obviously, I've read a lot, and I, I read a lot of him in childhood as well. Um, I've read uh, a little bit of Edward Lear, well, actually, a fair bit of Edward Lear. Um, the odd one from M Emily Dickinson, um, the odd one from Christina Rossetti. Um, what's the guy who did um, I Hold? Uh, I hold with those who favour fire, um, fire and ice or something, I forgot, isn't it, Robert, what, it's Robert someone, isn't it, Robert Frost, I think it's Robert Frost, anyway, um, I've, you know, maybe a, a couple from him, a few from William Blake, a few from William Wordsworth, um, and, and that's really it, I mean, obviously the Raven from, um, Edgar Allan Poe, um, but I don't think I've read any any other of his, uh, and, and and that's really it. But you know, I I can't really say I've I've, I've uh, kind of read. Oh, sorry, Charles Bitowski as well. Obviously, Charles Bitowski. Um, it's probably a few that I've read a few of or listened to a few on on uh, YouTube of. Um, but yeah, other other than that, that's, that's probably about it. That's where where I stand really. Um, now, I have read, actually, a few other poems from just random poets as well. Oh, actually, I've read some from uh, Percy Shelley, of course. Um, but mainly I've read, like, these compilate. Some Sometimes I've read compilations, and it's from all different people. And some of the people I forget, I forget the names of, but some of the poems that I've read from just random poets have been quite good, but I've, I've not remembered the name. Um... But really, my kind of, I like, if, these are the ones I actually like. I like Dr. Zeus, I like Edward Lear, for obvious reasons, because they're just weird and nonsensical. Um, I like a few from William Blake and a few from William Wordsworth, because they're uh, the idealistic romantic poetry, the romanticism poetry, and I like that, and that's what I do a little, little bit of it uh, myself, and I'm very kind of traditional in that way. Um, oh, also I've read uh, Basho, of course, uh, uh, haiku, because I've done, I've done like a few haiku myself, maybe like 20 or 30 haiku, um, so I like Basho, of course, and the art of the haiku, it's, it's very, very hard to actually do one that is not imitating someone who's already done haiku, it's very, very hard, and I've had, I've had a lot of trouble with trying to get my haiku to a level where I'm happy with it, that it ju doesn't just imitate someone like like Basho. Um, so it's uh, it's a hard one. I think probably out of the thirty, I've done about four, maybe three or four of those that I'm actually happy with. The other twenty six are like they're okay, but they're a little bit imitatey, or they're a little bit um, just kind of quite traditional in a sense and it doesn't really add anything tasty because when I think about poetry I always think of trying to get a little tasty morsel of of um, experience in there of presence of uh, wisdom of um, life uh, existence in my poetry um, that's what it's about that's why I like Charles Butowski and I've only recently discovered him maybe six months ago, four months ago, something like that. Um, and I, I would say, like, most of the old poets, I just don't get on well with. I, I, I read them and I think it's not 
great, you know, it's like, I'm meant to enjoy this. This is meant to be nice and enjoyable and, and full of life, and it, and it just isn't. And so when I came across Charles Butowski and him being of that orientation of the fact that he says on videos, you know, about how people, like like what I've just said there, it's kind of like, there's not a lot in a lot of people's writing, and he, and he more talks about this in novels and stuff, but in a lot of people's writing, there isn't that kind of, little something you know that kick um and i feel the same when i've gone back through poetry i'm like i meant to enjoy it and maybe there's a lot of people out well clearly there is a lot of people out there who really understand it and get with it and it's good but for me it's like um uh wayne and maria Welk stuff it's like I was reading it, and there was some bits that I was like, okay, okay, this is good, this is powerful. But when there was other parts of the poetry, I was like, it, it seems too convoluted, well, it's convoluted, right? I don't know, just a little bit drawn out, or it feels too, like it's missing something. I don't know, but that was just my opinion on, on that particular poetry. And of course, there's many, 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 and I'm, I'm no one to speak, because there's many, many poems that I've done that are, absolute trash absolute horrendous trash and you know trying to actually get a good poem it's like in a year right let me put it this way in a year if you do a poem every three days for example and you get 110 poems 120 poems out of that year if you get 10 good poems out of that that is bloody good because 100, 110 of them after a year or so or maybe a hundred of them after a year or so you think yeah, it, it, it's good, but it's not great, and you could even argue that it's not even that good. So, I think that maybe when you get older and you've been doing poetry for longer, the ratio from good and bad poetry is a lot better. I certainly do think that since I've been doing poetry, the ratio's improved quite a lot. Like, first off, my early poems, God, I don't even want to look at them. Some of them, just I don't. I just I think they're trash. Um, but then now, I see, you know, a few more good poems coming through, and still, still a lot of egoic trash. I mean, there really is there's just still a lot of egoic trash that I produce. Um, but there's one here and there that sparks a little bit of presence. I mean, yeah, you know, that's good. That's tasty. That's present that's got that little tasty morsel that little nugget that we're looking for in good poetry um but yeah i don't know it might just be my personality it might just be my demeanor but i can't get behind certain poetry and and when i'm reading it it just doesn't get me and i know it will get another person and that's good because then it means that they've got that inspiration there but for me it's like i always read dr zeus and i get um you could almost say intoxicated in a way or enamored by the rhyming i just love the rhyming i love the nonsense literature <clears throat> nonsense literature or nonsense poetry i love that you know and that smart spark the um i, I don't know from um edgar lear edgar, edgar lear edward lear um that spark, you know, that, uh, things like the owl and the pussycat and stuff like that, the, the rhyming and the, it's just got a taste, you know, that's the only way I can describe it, I only describe it in a sound and it's like, it's got that little bit of a, you know, anyway, if you're not a poet, you'll be like, what, this guy's insane, what, what's he talking about, but if you know poetry, then you'll, you'll understand what I'm on about when I say about that little nugget, that little taste, and, um, Anyway, so I get that from them, and I get that from a bit of the rhyming poetry, the romanticism rhyming poetry of, um, of, uh, and also there's a deep presence as well in like uh, William Blake stuff and some of William Wordsworth stuff and things like that. I get, I get that there, and uh, uh, you know, it, it's nice. It, it, yeah, really, and and the same is very much true for Charles Butowski. I can listen to him, and I can think, wow, you know, that poetry is incredible. Same is true for certain poems from different poets but I generally poetry my taste in poetry is like my taste in music my taste in music is like I, I'll I listen to a lot of music but I don't really like one artist 
in terms of all their music. There's not one artist out there like practically the whole corpus of, let's say. But I just like a few songs from many different artists, and it's the same with poetry. There are ones I like from practically every poet I come across, but there's only ones, there's not loads. With Dr. Zeus, it's getting there with like liking all of them, although even saying that some of the stories, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's not the best. But, you know, some of them, I can, quite a lot of them I can get behind. Uh, it's the same with Edward Lear, even with Edward Lear, it's like, I don't like everything, all of his stuff. For some of it, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's okay, but again, there's other ones that are, that are really, really good. There's a Mr. Panopanopolis or something. I don't know, I forgot, I forgot the name of the poem, but it's something like Mr. and Mrs. Panopolis or something. Something like, anyway, I'll have to Google it. Um, but I listened to that on an audiobook once, and that was quite interesting. Um, I think I remember it being kind of, it had, an, had like hidden tones of being quite dark as well. Um, but no, so that's my kind of taste in poetry, and I don't really, um, I just follow what I do, like, I, I've, I, I've been doing poetry for about two years now, I think, and, um, at first I was very kind of, I do the rhyming, I do, that's me, that's me, the rhyming stuff is me, and I, I would kind of just, Bush pose, uh, prose poetry away, oh no, not prose, that's not poetry, that's just bloody writing that, that's not actual poetry, I was like, that's what it was like for, for a long time, I mean, anyway, because cause I saw these bloody Instagram poems, it was like, I went to Tesco, there was a brown bin outside, uh, when, I, when I came out, there was an old woman, you know, and, and, I, I, that was what it was one of the poems I read, but it wasn't exactly like that. I'm, I'm kind of dulling it down a little bit, but um, it was very, it was similar to that. It was kind of a bit, you know, flat. I thought, well, this, this isn't poetry. This is just explaining what you, what, what your bloody shopping trip is. Well, you know. Anyway, when I started to do prose, that first prose poem I did was um, Celestial Dance. I, I can't recite it by heart, by the way. I probably know two lines of it or something. I write too much poetry, that's the problem. I probably wrote about, in two years, three to four hundred poems, something like that, and that's not considering any of the fragments that I've got, because I, I know that if you're a poet and you're watching, you'll probably be the same. I, 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 you might not be the same in terms of writing it all on your phone notes. I write them on my phone notes, but um, you might be the same in terms of having fragments of poetry written and you just leave them, and I've got tons of them on my phone notes, um, and I've got tons of poetry that I've kind of completed, but I've just forgot about, and I don't, I've, I've not put it into any document on my computer, it's just been left, you know, so, um, so I don't remember it off my heart, but it is a good poem, it's one of my best poems, um, and it was one, of, it, it was either the first, or one of the first I did prose, and, um, when I latched on to the secret of prose, which, which took a good few months, um, and the secret of prose is presence, you know, the secret of poetry is presence, that's it, really that's the only secret of, of good poetry, presence. What are you doing right now? So what, what is this? What is this? How can we describe this situation right now? What is happening? What is life? Because life is poetry. There isn't poetry and life, there is the two together, they are one thing, poetry and life are one thing, and in expressing life in poetry, within presence, you get to good poetry, um, so that's the secret of prose, and it's also the secret of uh, nonsense literature, or, or nonsense poetry like Dr. Zeus or like Edward Lear, however, you, you're going to say to me, well, hang on a minute, how can you be present in the moment when Dr. Zeus is talking about things that don't even exist. He's talking about bloody um, Yertle the Turtle or whatever. Is that right, Yertle the Turtle? I think it is anyway. But he's talking about, you know, all these random creatures from different uh, places and, and, and they don't exist. So how can you be present and like that? Well, well, you have presence in your imagination. So you go inside your imagination these images start to be called to mind, and then as soon as you get the image, you write down, and you have presence in that way, and and that's, you can channel the imagination through the present moment into the, the work of poetry, so that's why presence comes into it that way. Um, 
so that's you know that's really the secret of poetry but then there was some other good poems I managed to do within the present when I got to grip for it and you know they're okay I look back on them now even just three months later or so two three months later and I think well yeah I mean they're probably not as good as I first m- made them out to be that's another thing about poetry is you write it and you think this is genius and then you look at it about three months six months later or something I've done that many times now with my poetry and I think Oh, 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 don't just go away. I hate you. You're just horrible. You just, oh, yeah, you know. Anyway, but, um, that's, that's what it is, you know, and, and you think to yourself, oh, God, why do I ever write that crap? So, um, you know, I mean, sometimes you do that days later. You can, you can love it one day, and then about three days later, you think, oh, God, what, why do I write that crap? You know. And then you have other poems, you forget your wrote, um, and you just leave them and you, you go back to them without even realising you're meant to be going back to them because you don't even, you've not remembered it, but you scroll in a document or you scroll on your phone or whatever it is, but, and you see it, and you think, bloody hell, that's actually pretty good, and you've forgotten all about it, so it, it works both ways, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only thing about poetry is like... <sighs> People consider it, consider it this great high art or this great kind of, ooh, you know, lovely um, uh, romantic thing in a way. But it's not. It, it, all it is is just commenting on reality. That's the nature of poetry. Um, I don't really take it too... You know, I suppose I'm quite bad as a poet in that way because I, I don't take it in this lovely romantic feeling, emotional way. I take it as just commenting on reality. Um, of course, there's some times where I'm writing a poem, well, quite often actually, where I do get quite um, bubble, you know, I get bubbling up in emotion, but it's a certain type of emotion. It's not like a romanticist emotion. It's not like a uh, a love type emotion. It's more of a an inquisitive courage or a a fervour, an existential fervour, or a, yeah, I don't know, something like that, a a sagacious nature inside of me that comes out and wants to comment, and, you know, it's almost this creative, sagacious nature, creative, inquisitive nature, it's very, very hard to, to describe, but, I mean, of course, there are some poems where you get that more romantic emotional love coming through especially like when you are writing a love poem of course you're going to get that um but the best poems i like writing are those with presence and you don't get as much of an emotional feeling with them because you're commenting on reality as it sits so you're writing it and you're thinking oh yeah this this is flowing this is good i'm being able to capture things in the real world and place them into a, a lovely um poetic setting, I think this is good, and there is something there, there is some sort of uh, creative urge there, there is some sort of creative feeling there, but it doesn't bubble up like crazy, it doesn't go ooh like that with some poems I've done, so like um, the disgust, uh, there was one poem I did, the disgust of being a human destined for death, and that poem, it's a very very powerful poem, very strong language, um, quite egoic actually as a poem, it's not my best work by any means because of the fact of it being quite egoic, but when I wrote it, that was a very strong anger within me, you know, an existential anger, anger on reality, you know, uh, toward reality, toward life, it was an anger toward life, and uh, you come up with it and it goes, you know, it flows like that, and and um it's a very powerful emotion and 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 that was utilized well in the poetry um even though i think that poem in particular uses alliterations a little bit too much uses language for the sake of decadence um rather than actually for good poetry um but you know it's okay for for the the emotion i got from it the, the basis of emotional feeling to write that was was correct 
The problem with, with poetry is you sometimes have this deep emotional creative urge, but it comes out through your ego rather than through some sort of like egoless flowering. So there's certain poetry that you can do with good presence that comes from this creative urge and then it's not very egoic. And when I say that, it, it's not decadent, it's not frivolous, it's not super, uh, superfluous, it's something that is contained, that's based in reality and that is good poetry just based on the feeling of the, the urge and the flowering of it rather than on language or you see good poetry doesn't take note of language good poetry just uses the language it immediately has it immediately thinks it doesn't doesn't pick out language it doesn't say i'm going to use these words like this in this arrangement it doesn't do that that would be um look into the future what it does is the, the, it pops up inside your mind and it 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 just the language comes to it it bursts with flavor and with love and with spontaneity and that the honest the honest spontaneity of this creative force let's say that works within you that is poetry um and uh, so there's been poems that i've drawn like that but there's all these different emotions with poetry that come through and that burst through and sometimes you've got to be careful of the anger poetry or the poetry with a lot of fervor behind it because when we have a lot of uh that like rambunctious nature and that wanting to to get this out we then we then fall into this trap of utilizing words of thinking about words of what we're going to put how we're going to arrange these things and that was the trap with the disgust of uh being a human being a human destined for death um i think that's the poem let, let me check the title of that poem because i swear that's not the title let me check oh yeah the disgust of being a human destined for death yeah oh, yeah it's, well, that was a bit a bit of the trap with that one a bit too much judging a little bit too little just flowing with the language not to say there wasn't that in there there certainly was that in there there was a flowing with the language but there was just little bits of it that i put in one too many alliterations and i thought a little bit too much about certain words and then it made it you know it just made it a bit tainted anyway um, but then there's other ones that I've done that are good and juicy and pleasant and, and they flow and you think, oh yeah, this is lovely, you know, there's a lovely fruity morsel of um, flavour here, or, or whatever it may be, a nugget of of um, juice, you know, a nugget of, I don't know, just a, a big meatball of lovely poetic, ooh, I don't know, just, it's so hard to explain, but it's beautiful, you know, it's just this lovely... <laughs> You know, and that's how we go out. We have to explain it like that. So anyway, um, I think that kind of covers it for poetry. I don't think we need to uh, touch much more on it. I think that that's kind of the, the basis of poetry. That's uh, what I, I like, what I consider. I think the only other thing is I've practically done... I've gone through all the different forms of poetry now, practically. As far as I'm aware, I've not done no. I've not done limericks. I've not done any limericks. I don't know whether I could. I could probably do limericks, but they're not. I probably wouldn't be brilliant. But the weird thing is, I never thought that I would do loads of different styles of poetry: prose, romanticism, haiku, um, nonsense poetry. Um, I don't know. Po poetry would just uh, copious amounts of presence, um, different forms of rhyming poetry as well, so different um, stanzas, so, uh, so different stanzas is in different stanza order, so within the stanza, or ver verse or order within the stanza, so there'd be different ways of rhyming um, within the stanza, and I've tried different ways of that, and that was interesting, although don't know quite whether it worked out brilliantly, although there's a couple of poems that aren't too bad with a different 
stanza or rhyming order. Um, but it's interesting because you go through and you think, well, don't know if I'm going to be good at this. I don't think this is really me. I don't think this is my style. But then you end up doing it and you flow with it and you think, oh, actually, it's uh, it's not too bad. It's it it works. Um, I don't really hold, I, I used to hold fast to a style, I said before, previously, that I, um, I started off with the rhyming poetry and the nonsense poetry, and I'm very sure that that's where I am. Uh, I know one thing that's included in my style, which is um, either alliterations, You'll find a fair few alliterations in my poetry, or you'll find words. So I'll put one word, full stop, one word, full stop, one word, full stop, maybe at the start of a stanza. And I don't know where that came from. I don't know where I've took that inspiration from. It must be from some poet somewhere. I don't know. Or maybe I've took a little bit of inspiration from here and then there and then combined it into some sort of curated thing, you know. Um... But that's something that's a part of my style, and I seem to go back to that quite a lot. And I like the alliterations, and I like the, the little words that I put in there. They're quite powerful. You can get it, so it's quite powerful if the, the words in each of those, word, full stop, word, full stop, word, full stop, if they sort of slightly rhyme or slightly flow quite well, um, that can be quite a powerful start to a stanza. Um, but I would say it's kind of a mixture of obviously that's a, an element, a small aspect of my style, but then there's more like, I would say more prose. It's weird because I flipped it straight on its head. I was like, yes, I'm a rhyming poet. That's who I am. That's my style over the rest of it. But now I'm totally the opposite. So I think any sort of um, clinging to any sort of style in poetry is, is really... Um, it's going to unravel, it's going to change, it's going to flip, and I don't think there's going to be one particular style that you're ever going to do forever, and I think that's a, I don't think that's poetry, because poetry always has to be, the creation of poetry is within change, and within flux, and within presence, and within moving through experience. And so if you're to stick with one rigid form and not change and not develop and not move, then I think that kind of goes against what poetry means in one sense. And so if that's the case, then uh, we have to think, well, actually, I'm not going to attach myself to one style, but just flow with whatever the experience is. Um, because I know that sometimes, like actually more recently, I've Although it's been some trash poetry, absolute disgusting poetry, like disgusting poetry. Um, not in the content. It's nothing bad in the content. I just mean it's just terrible poetry. Um, but there's just been some terrible rhyming poetry I've done recently since I've gone back to it, and uh, I need to refine my myself with with some of it. There's maybe been a couple of salvageable pieces that are actually good, you know, but. Um, I think that there is that style still within me. I still want to do that. I still want to pursue that. But um, it changes. It. It's different all the time. I just do what I naturally want to do. Because I think that if you try and force anything, you try and be a particular poet, you try and do something that doesn't feel quite natural, then just, just forget about it. Because it's like often I'll pick up my phone and I'll have this desire you know mild desire to do a poem i mean i'll do a poem but it's kind of a tainted desire it's kind of like I'm, I'm doing a poem just to do a poem here so then whenever that happens i write out one line or i write out two lines and i, I just delete them or i just leave them in my phone notes as fragments and we won't ever go anywhere we won't ever get put in a poem and that's good that's how it should be i don't want to do a poem just like that but then there's other times where I feel, oh, I feel some sort of urge here. I feel a compulsion, instinctual, possibly an instinctual drive, uh, creative drive to, to do these things and uh, uh, do a poem. And, and then I will do one and it'll, it'll be, it'll spark something. I'll be like, yes, you know, and I think that's, that's the juice. And then after a poem, you always have this feeling of, I don't know, it's a weird feeling of, 
a fulfilled sense of hunger or a fulfilled satisfaction uh, you're satisfied with uh your your imagine you eat a meal and then you're satisfied and you're you're full and physiologically you're you're happy or you know you just your body feels good because you've had a nice meal kind of like that it feels after you've done a poem it feels like that you feel good you feel as if you've done something and you you've you've you're satisfied and you're happy and you feel contented with it um but i think there is also if we look behind that feeling because we could peel back the layers you see there's possibly also this very very minute feeling of incompleteness or what do i do now there's kind of that just behind that satisf satisfied nature there's that as well just this mm, i just feel slightly incomplete i just feel slightly as if it's not quite there or as if you know what what is the now that i should should go and do you know it's i mean there's probably a parallel to draw between partially that feeling and partially the old idea of uh, animals feeling sad after sex there's a great latin quote i, I can't I can't recall the Latin quote, but it goes something like in the translation to English, uh, all animals are sad after after coitus. It's something like that. Let me type it in. I'm, I swear uh, it's something like that. All animals are sad after. Let me let me type this in. Every animal is sad after coitus, except the human female and the rooster. Oh my god. Well, but then it says, uh, and this is only on Google, so take it as you will, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Not true. According to the new study published in the Journal Sexual of Sexual Medicine, led by researchers in Australia. Oh, so it's saying it's not true there, but still. Anyway, but there is, there is definitely some sort of empirical feeling there anyway, so regardless of what they're saying, there's, there's some feeling there of some regard. Um, but no, it feels like that. It feels like, um, this weird, just this weird feeling, this weird ontological, existential uncertainty, you know, what is there to do now, where, well, you know, it's, it's weird, anyway, I'll leave it there, because we've done 33 minutes on poetry, this will serve well for the person in 2149 who wants to know about poetry, and is sick of seeing my face, and is sick of reading my poetry, because obviously I've, I'll probably have published about 30 books by the end of my life, and will be like, oh, well, I'm not reading his poetry, because it's mainly crap, um, but at least you can take some of my words, and, and hopefully they'll inspire you, and uh, it's, it's good that we can speak like this, because, you see, if I was living in 1850, well, you see, I, I can't speak to Edward Lear, can I? You know, I can't speak to him like this, but you can speak to me. Hi there. Um, so it's it's good, you know, and you can realise that, look, I am just a human being. It, it's just it's just me, you know, I'm not anything special. Um, even though, let's say, at some point in my life or after my life, let's say maybe I have become something special, then you don't need to idolise me because, look, I'm just, I'm just here. I know, I know I look pretty good in this, in this, jacket but it's all an illusion you know it, it doesn't mean anything so um yeah don't worry i'm just a normal human i'm flesh like you i'm subject to entropy decay and death and ultimately that's what's going to happen to you so basically what i'm saying is don't worry just do whatever poetry you want to do and screw it you know just put it in a few books get it out there except don't put too much bad poetry in books because well what's the point in doing that that's what i do i did I, I was terrible i did that don't do that by the way if you're watching i, I did that my first book was, was crap i ne nearly said a bad word then but i say it on this channel a lot now anyway um my first uh poetry book was crap well there was like one or two salv salvageable poems second book was a bit better with some of the nonsense the poetry in there third book i'm not even publishing i've wrote the entire bloody book i'm not publishing it because my god that book is just so egoic the amount of egoic poetry in that book is it's horrendous so i'm going to compile a new book with you know more of a selective 
poetry that I've done over the last year. So my third book might be okay, but my actual third book that I did before the publish of my actual third book, that doesn't make sense, does it? But the third book that was a po prototype was crap. The third book that I actually published is probably going to be pretty good. So actually, if you haven't read my third book right now, you know, probably like in your 20s or 30s or something, um, if you haven't read that third book, go and read that one, um, because that one's probably going to be good. Um, if you like the nonsense stuff, read the second book, because that'll be good. Um, and I don't know after that because I'd have to update you when I get to like 50 to see what the other books are like because I don't know I, I could say well go and read my 11th book but I don't know because I've not done it yet um, probably don't read the 11th book because it's a bit of an odd number in it it's a bit of a weird number um, probably read like my 7th book because that's a lucky number and maybe I'll put a bit more effort into that unconsciously because I know that it's a lucky number to quite a lot of people. So you never know. I mean, I might have done, I might not. Anyway, I'm just rambling now. So um, I'll see you. Uh, I won't see you because unfortunately I'll be dead. We'll never actually be able to commune and meet up. I'll never be able to shake your hand in 2149, which is a shame because I would have really liked to shake your hand and tell you that everything's going to be okay and that, you know, you don't need to idolise people and you can just do your own poetry as you see fit. Um, but I can't do that. Well, well, hang on. Let's do a virtual handshake. Hi there. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you. There we go. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I'm going to leave it there. I'll see you in the next one. And uh, yeah, that was just a little bit of a ramble on poetry. So see you very soon, guys.